Hinges are a fundamental part of all kinds of parts, but did you know you can actually make the hinge a part of a part? It's called a living hinge, and if you put a living hinge in any sort of part, you can make those parts actually have a party. So let's pick that apart. So there's a lot of different types of living hinges, but inside of 3D printing, you have all kinds of different options because you have a lot more control of the pieces that you're making and the designs that they're able to make. The most traditional living hinge is literally just a thin flap of material, which is made very thin so that it can flex without actually fatiguing. These type of living hinges though do have an issue because they wear out. They're often used on something like old tackle boxes or small enclosures, and they're fine with traditional manufacturing, but they can't be used many, many times, and they can't flex through very long distances, otherwise they break like that. And while that's not an ideal situation you want to have in a lot of parts, you can do it inside of 3D printing with certain types of materials. So a typical living hinge can be done with like TPU or polypropylene or other types of materials so it can be mass produced and create a good reliable piece. But you also have to consider the orientation of the part. It can only be printed on its side, which can limit it to some degree. There are some variations of that where you can still have a living hinge and have it be reliable, but it's a difficult type of geometry to kind of have to work with. and Fundamentally, it's not very good engineering because it is a point of fatigue that'll eventually wear out. And there's so many other options when you have 3D printing. You can reduce the wear on a particular living hinge just by giving it more material to wear on. So like in the case of this circular hinge, all you are doing is giving that stress more places to go by giving it a much larger area to work on. Rather than a very small defined point, you have it on a very big broad point. It doesn't give you quite the same range of motion because you can flex stuff a lot more, but it puts an automatic spring into the hinge so that you now have a lid that automatically closes and a lot more play and a lot more flexibility in narrow ranges than the typical type of living hinge would ever provide. But you can take that circular hinge a little bit further and by reducing the amount of material even more and giving it kind of this toothed look, you can give it a lot more flexibility, a lot more longevity, and still have the spring return. But by changing the depth of those grooves and the number of those grooves, you can actually kind of change how that hinge behaves. So the circular hinges are another way of doing living hinges. But sometimes that circle will pop out too far into a particular geometry. So you might still want that flexibility with much less protrusion. A long time ago on a project that we did with robots, we actually created a gripper finger using this kind of spring hinge. And this sort of living hinge is very useful because again, you get a good amount of flexibility with very little wear because no single part of the hinge actually has to flex very far. This is a good way of creating like long articulated columns or multiple hinges inside the length of a long thin part so that you don't have to have a single plate of wear like a traditional living hinge but you still have a good amount of flexibility. One of the more traditional hinges is actually the living hinge that you might have seen in like woodworking. And this is where you, you cut individual slats inside of a horizontal plate that is printed just like this. But those individual slats are able to twist and bend around each other. And by creating that twisting motion and freedom within it, you're able to create something really flexible. It's not just a perforated edge where again, the material is flexing directly. It's just twisting these individual areas just a little bit, kind of the way you twist a rope just like this. So this is a copying pattern of basically having a piece of material connected right here and then two edges that bend just like this. So that gives you a lot of freedom. It can bend pretty darn well, but you have to design this actually around the radius that you're trying to bend around. This hinge type is fairly easy to manufacture. It's not ideal because you have so much precision in it, but it can be made very chunky and depending on the end application, it looks really good and it can last a very long time because you have so much distributed motion, you don't have any single force on any single area, so it takes a long time for a hinge like this to completely fatigue and break away. But this is all in the traditional living hinges, and a living hinge is one where you have the material itself flex, and that's not a very good way of making a hinge. What if you could just do the hinge traditionally where it actually moves around an axle? Here, 3D printing has a really fantastic advantage because it's able to make parts inside of other parts without actually having to assemble anything. So you have these hinges where you can have a flexible point moving around a central axle that was all printed as a single piece. These are not screws. Nothing was screwed together. This part was grown like this. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this. You can print this part vertically just like this, which gives you really nice motion around the central axle to where it's nice and smooth and circular and can be pretty high precision, but it can be tough to kind of design and you have to be really careful to chamfer those inner axes so that you don't have interface or layers falling onto each other. But that can be a little bit weaker because the layer lines are now horizontal. So if you have a lot of torsional force on this that's not ideal. Just make something thick and make sure you're designing for the process and it's not that big of an issue. But if for some reason you're trying to make this very, very small, then you would want to print it horizontally because then the layer lines are moving through the point of rotation. And now you have basically a traditional solid part. And while you still have the same kind of rotation, it can be a lot rougher. Hear that? 
That's because inside of the axle, there's a little bit of settling that happens. So it becomes a little bit oval. So this is generally for like cheaper applications. So there you can get away with this. And if you have a large hinge door on this, you have so much leverage on it that there's no way it would ever stick or have an issue, but it just isn't as smooth as the vertically printed option. So there you have it. There are all kinds of hinges that can be made. And with 3D printing, you can actually make impossible hinges that are not possible any other way. So depending on what your application is, use the best hinge that works for you based on the profile that you have based on what your requirements are and based on what your cost is. A traditional simple living hinge can be very affordable to put into any part and doesn't really add any cost at all. Whereas this type of part could increase rejection rate. So in mass production, it could be an issue, but if you design it right, it's not an issue at all. Just make sure that you're designing for the process. Comment down below if there's other topics or other mechanisms inside of 3D printing that you'd like us to cover. There's a lot of stuff that has been designed out there and that people don't really know all the options that exist and how much design freedom you have in creating mass producible 3D printed parts. So do let us know if there's other topics that you'd like us to cover. Have a great day, everybody.